This is Tony Hendrick with Painting Live, and today I'm going to talk about simplicity. And here I've created a, a Mark Rothko, huh? Pretty simple. <laughs> Well, that's not how I want to talk about simplicity today. Because simplicity is sometimes not so simple. I used to paint billboards for a living, and I remember, you know, there was a lot of talk about making the billboards simple because, you know, you're essentially grabbing somebody's attention while they're driving on the highway and you want that message to be clear and simple yeah in order to do that you gotta go through a process of eliminating all the complexity of the message that you're trying to to get across and sim bring it down to its essence, really. So, uh, so I just started off with <laughs> uh, talking about Mark Rothko. Um, I think I saw, I'm not sure if it was on PBS or something, there was some play that had been done about Mark Rothko and... And for anybody who doesn't know who Mark Rothko is, kind of a mid-century expressionist. Um, geez, I'm not even going to get the category right that he's in. Just uh, minimalist. I'm not sure if he was considered minimalist or expressionist, but it just reveals how well my mind retains this kind of information. So I, can see that I probably didn't do so well in art history classes. <laughs> but it's probably because I was paying more attention to the, you know, the essence of what was being talked about, not so much with the the details. Anyway, so back to this Rothko play. You get you get a watching this play, you get a real sense that this was not somebody who was um, necessarily at peace with himself. Um, had a very busy mind, it appeared to me anyway. And yet, what made his art so wonderful, and it still is wonderful to look at, is probably that very thing that was shown in the the play of him having to deal with this part of himself that was very complicated. Um, I shared, I think, yesterday a little story about me cleaning up my studio. Let's see. Started off with this painting and these deep reds. I'm kind of liking it. Maybe I'll stick with these deep colors and not really get into white like I typically do. Well, that's kind of nice. So it looks like I'm going to experience something different for myself because I usually don't paint this way. Anyway, with these kind of colors, I have a tendency to bring in white to my painting. So maybe I'll challenge myself today and see what I can do without white. So I was talking yesterday about cleaning up my studio and re reconfiguring it really. It was, did a lot of, it took me three weeks to do. And then by at the end of it, you know, I kind of had a anticlimactic experience, um, kind of a letdown experience, I guess is what 
I had, and it was what I found is I still was left after three weeks of getting my studio the way I wanted it. I was still left with the inertia <laughs> of my own mind. And I've looked at my mind enough to realize that that's the main thing in my life that brings in the complications unnecessarily at times. And I could go into, you know, getting down on myself or having this feeling of inertia. Or I could simply look at what's behind it. And really what's behind inertia is determination. If I didn't have determination, I wouldn't feel the inertia. And why, why do I feel the inertia? Well, probably because I'm holding on to some belief or idea that I need to succeed at what it is that I'm doing. And if I can recognize that, actually, if I recognize that I have a fear of failing, Okay, I told myself I'm not going to use white, but I can cheat and use a lot of yellow. Um, well, if I've got this fear of failure, then behind that is going to be wanting success. So if I simply let go of my need for the success... Now I've gotten rid of the inertia. And then what I find behind that is what I really want. It's just to feel good. Oops, I just spotted my white. <laughs> oh well, I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, so well, now that I did it, I'm going to continue to do it. See what happens. Maybe I'll just not do a lot of it. Anyway, so back to simplicity. What does this have to do with painting? Well, really it is about what's going on in the mind. And While we're creating art, we're going to have to deal with things that are going on in our mind. So there are simple ways of getting, getting past those blocks. I don't know, several, uh, I don't know, several of these ago, a few days ago, I'm not sure when it was, I talked about uh, coming across a video about Wim Hof, who's an athlete in the Netherlands who does stuff with extreme cold. Instead of doing white, I'm tempted to do white. I'm going to bring in some black, see what happens there. And he had said in this little video that this breathing technique that he uses essentially brings in stress for the body and then you find stillness within that stress. Well, I mentioned that I'd, I had done probably 15 years ago a technique called still point breathing. Um, Dr. Michael Rice is the person I learned it from. Uh, so you can look him up if you're interested. But I saw a documentary about this Wim Hof and him doing these breathing things, and 
because I had this experience with still point breathing, which involved a different kind of way to get into it, which was a little more complicated than what it appeared to me Wim Hof was teaching. So I didn't really look into it much further because guess what? I had a belief in my mind that things need to be complicated if they're going to be worthwhile. <laughs> Not so much complicated, but there's got to be more to it. It can't be that simple and straightforward like it appeared. So anyway, I decided to check him out, check out his breathing technique, and I've, I've been using it for the last several days. And it is straightforward. It's 11 minutes. It's an 11 minute process, and I tell you what, it gets you deep into that stillness um, within that even, you know, hours of meditation that I've done. That's never consistent for me because sometimes I'm just in a space where my mind is so active that it just isn't working for me. And other times it's great, but this just feels really consistent, and it's simple. <laughs> it's simple. <laughs> um, so I know from the story that he shared, he didn't get to that process in a day. So, and you look at something like Einstein's. E equals MC squared. That's pretty simple. A simple, oh, what are those called? Equation or whatever it's called. Um, but that simplicity came out of getting rid of a lot of complex equations. And bringing that, that complexity down to its essence. Wow, I kind of just like this the way it is. This is really new for me to play with colors in this, this way. Well, that's another thing with simplicity is you don't want to get bored, right? When you're creating art. So you can kind of get yourself into a a place where, well, I know how to do this. So you continue doing it, doing it, but you're actually bored underneath. But the reason you're doing it is probably because it's brought you success or whatever. And if you can see that that's the reason you're doing it and switch from needing to be successful to realizing it's just all about wanting to have fun or feeling good, then you can get yourself out of that. Try something new. You know, there's ways we're also wired that's just the way we are wired. We have a, a dog and a cat, a kitten. Well, not a kitten anymore, but well, this, we have a pet door, so the cat can go outside. We live out on a farm, um, not in town or anything, so it's safer, except for maybe coyotes, but never really had issues with that. Anyway, our cat goes outside the pet door, and she'll bring in a mouse into the house. <laughs> it's in her nature. It's in her wiring. Well, our dog is a rat terrier and they are bred to kill rats on farms that's what they're wired to do so to make things simple when a cat brings the mouse into the house she just wants to play with it and then you know it'll end up in the house somewhere maybe dead somewhere or whatever and later we go what's that smell Okay, so maybe too much detail I'm giving here. But what we do, what we do is just get our dog to 
go over to where the cat's playing with the mouse and because she's bred to just simply kill rats she goes and grabs it kills it and it's done taken care of it's part of how she's wired um, so you're wired in a particular way pay attention to how you feel so you can tune into the simplicity of you creating through your own unique way and uh, enjoy your weekend get out your brushes um, we're moving into the holiday week I think I'll still do this next week um, I'm enjoying it so if you want to tune in next week I'll be here at 7 a.m.